Hello everyone! November 2023 is a month filled with celestial marvels just waiting to be explored in the night sky. In today's video, we're going to explore the magic of Jupiter, our solar system's giant as it comes closest to Earth. There's also a dazzling celestial jewel gracing our pre-dawn sky, casting its glow before gracefully vanishing behind the moon. And hold on to your telescopes because November brings us a treasure trove of deep sky marvels. We're talking about galaxies, nebulae and star clusters all waiting to be explored. Welcome to Widow's Astro Forum, let's get started. I'm joining you from Utrecht, the Netherlands, which means our night sky resembles what you'd see in the Northern Hemisphere, in places like London, the south of England, Wales and Ireland. Similar skies are visible across Canada from Quebec to Vancouver, as well as parts of the Northern United States. Additionally, our night sky aligns with places like Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Moscow in Russia and various European cities like Warsaw in Poland and Berlin in Germany. You might have noticed that autumn has arrived, bringing with it the challenge of cloudy skies that obscured my view of the night sky in recent weeks. Given these conditions, I'll be relying on virtual sky charts to illustrate the celestial events you can anticipate in the upcoming month. Let's all hope for some clear skies ahead. In November 2023, our western evening sky features two planets, Mercury and Mars, positioned near the Sun just after sunset. However, it's essential to be candid about the viewing conditions. At the start of the month, these planets will be situated within 6 degrees of the Sun. This close proximity to the Sun will likely render them challenging, if not impossible to observe, as the Sun's brightness will overpower their visibility. However, Mercury is set to make a noteworthy move. Throughout November, Mercury will gradually distance itself from its scorching parent, culminating in its farthest position from the Sun during the first week of December. Astronomers call this event Mercury at Greatest Elongation. Keep an eye out for Mercury towards the end of November and early December, when Mercury is farther from the Sun, making it easier to spot. Meanwhile, Mars will embark on a game of celestial hide-and-seek. On November 18, the planet will vanish entirely behind the Sun. Astronomers call this event Mars at Superior Conjunction, meaning it will be positioned directly behind the Sun as viewed from Earth. If you're a Mars enthusiast, I regret to inform you that you'll need to exercise patience. You'll have to wait until next March, when Mars re-emerges in our pre-dawn sky, appearing near Venus on the opposite side of the Sun. If Mercury eludes your view, consider turning your attention to Saturn, one of our solar system's most stunning planets with its majestic rings. In November, Saturn can be found in the southern evening sky situated about 25 degrees above the horizon in the constellation Aquarius. To the unaided eye, Saturn will present itself as a soft golden speck in the night sky. With a high-quality telescope featuring a substantial aperture and focal length, observing Saturn's magnificent rings becomes a delightful experience. However, at my specific latitude, Saturn rarely ascends high in the sky. Consequently, my attempts to capture sharp images of Saturn, like this picture I took last month with my 8-inch Edge HD telescope, often yield unsatisfactory results. The blurriness of the images is not a reflection of the telescope's quality, but is primarily due to Saturn's low position on the horizon. For optimal viewing, I recommend traveling to a region near the equator, where Saturn will appear high in the night sky. Let's shift our gaze southward and advance from evening to midnight. Here an incredible celestial event awaits us on November 2nd. Our solar system's grandest planet, Jupiter, will elegantly ascend to the southern part of the night sky, coming closest to Earth. In more technical terms, you can inform your friends that Jupiter and Earth are in opposition, signifying that they are perfectly aligned on the same side of the Sun. Unfortunately, my weather forecast anticipates nothing but cloudy skies this week, and you might encounter similar conditions if you're in Europe. However, don't be disheartened. Jupiter will continue to grace the southern sky throughout the entire month, affording you with ample opportunities to observe this colossal planet. So keep a watchful eye and seize the chance to gaze upon our solar system's largest world when a gap appears in the autumn clouds. 
I also enjoy gazing at Jupiter's captivating Galilean moons, but to get a good look, you'll need binoculars or a telescope. One of my top picks is Io, which stands out as the most volcanically active world in the entire solar system. Just check out this recent snapshot of Io taken by NASA's Juno spacecraft in October. Pretty cool, right? Jupiter boasts a bunch of moons including Europa, a mysterious icy moon. Astronomers believe Europa has a hidden ocean beneath its icy crust, possibly hosting some form of alien life. And let's not forget Ganymede, which holds the title for being the largest moon in our whole solar system. I may not have the fancy equipment of the Juno spacecraft, but here's a picture I took of Jupiter and a cool time-lapse video of the moon Io passing in front of Jupiter, all using my regular backyard telescope. If you're curious about capturing planetary images with a telescope, I invite you to click the join button below this video and become a member of my channel for just $2.99. As a member, you'll get instant access to a 3 hour course split into 6 easy to follow lectures where I'll walk you through the joy of planetary imaging, the best times to do it, what equipment you'll need and how to take and process awesome pictures and videos like the ones I've shared. Your your support truly means a lot and helps me to keep this channel going strong. Let me highlight a couple of exciting transits to watch for this November. I'll be referring to Universal Time, which aligns with UK Time or Greenwich Mean Time. November 5, we're in for a fantastic transit of Moon Io as it passes near Jupiter's Great Red Spot, the largest and most enduring storm on the planet. This captivating event begins around 3 a.m. and concludes at approximately 5.30 a.m. Universal Time. Another noteworthy transit occurs on November 21 with Europa passing in front of Jupiter with its red spot positioned to the right. This event spans from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m universal time. On November 24, Ganymede will have its turn to transit Jupiter from a quarter to 11 pm until roughly 3.30 am. Lastly, Moon Io returns for another close transit near Jupiter's Great Red Spot on November 29, lasting from 9 pm to around a quarter past midnight. For comprehensive information about all the transits happening this month, please refer to the link provided in the video description below, which includes a detailed table with start and end times of each transit. If you stay awake from midnight until dawn this November, you'll likely spot a radiant gem just above the eastern horizon at 2.30 am, gradually ascending to the southeast until sunrise. Visible to the naked eye, this celestial gem is none other than Venus, our enigmatic neighboring planet, veiled in clouds. Venus will grace the morning sky throughout this month. An amazing event awaits on November 9, known as the Venus Occultation. For observers at a latitude similar to mine, Venus will gracefully slip behind the moon and re-emerge on the other side. Regrettably, this spectacle will unfold during daylight hours for me. The occultation is scheduled to commence at 9.30 am universal time when Venus will vanish behind the moon and it will magically reappear on the opposite side at 11 am. During this event, the moon will showcase a slender crescent shape being about 15% illuminated. Don't miss this extraordinary event. Despite the daytime occurrence in Europe, both the moon and Venus will shine brightly enough to be observed, especially with the aid of some binoculars or a telescope. Seize this opportunity if you're blessed with clear skies. Additionally, mark your calendars for the full moon on November 28, often referred to as the Beaver Moon. The origins of its name vary, with some attributing it to Native Americans setting beaver traps during this period, while others linked it to the bustling activity of beavers constructing their winter dams. In different cultures, it's also known as the Frost Moon. Let's move on to discussing an amazing show of shooting stars you don't want to miss. It's the Leonids Meteor Shower and it's going to be quite a show. The Meteor Shower will be at its peak on November 17 and during that time you can expect to see up to 15 shooting stars per hour streaking across the night sky. These meteors will be racing into Earth's atmosphere at a whopping 71 km per second and will shine brightly with an average magnitude of 2.5. The best part is that the moon will only be 20% lit, which means we should have a clear view of these stunning shooting stars. 
They can appear anywhere in the night sky, but they all originate from the constellation Leo. You can spot Leo rising in the northeast around midnight and moving to the southern sky until sunrise. But wait, there's more. Alongside the Leonids, we have the Southern Taurus meteor shower kicking off in early November with its peak around November 18. During its peak, you can catch up to 8 meteors per hour on average. These meteors will be zipping through Earth's atmosphere at a speed of around 36 kilometers per second. Like the Leonids, they can appear anywhere in the night sky, but they originate from the constellation Taurus. Look for Taurus rising in the east after sunset, climbing towards the south around midnight, and then making its descent towards the southwest until sunrise. So, get ready for a double meteor show treat this November. Let's also talk about some fantastic deep sky objects visible in November 2023. We'll begin with two incredible objects that are so bright you can even see them with the naked eye. First up is the Andromeda Galaxy. Our closest spiral galaxy located a staggering 2.5 million light years away. To put this in perspective, one light year equals about 9.46 trillion kilometers or 5.88 trillion miles. Andromeda is one of the largest deep sky objects visible to the naked eye, spanning about 3 degrees in the sky. To give you an idea, that's roughly 6 times the width of our moon. This galaxy is immense, stretching over 220,000 light years and containing an estimated 1 trillion stars, which is why we can admire it even from such a vast distance. To catch a glimpse of the Andromeda galaxy, here's what you can do. Right after sunset, cast your gaze towards the northeast about 60 degrees up from the horizon. You'll likely see a faint hazy blob. That's Andromeda. At 9 p.m. it will be way up high in the sky, almost directly above you. From there it will slowly make its way down towards the northwest until the sun rises. And here's a good trick. If you got a free planetarium app like Stellarium, it's a game changer for finding objects in the night sky without any fancy equipment. Just type in what you're looking for, hold up your smartphone to the heavens and Stellarium will point you in the right direction. If you're aiming to see more than just a faint blur in the night sky, you might want to consider investing in a camera or one of these beginner-friendly smart telescopes that are gaining popularity nowadays. I've personally tested out some of these smart telescopes on my channel. For instance, this is a stacked picture of the Andromeda Galaxy taken over 40 minutes using the Dwarf 2 smart telescope, which is currently priced at around $500 or euros. Additionally, I've captured a one-hour image of the core of the Andromeda Galaxy with the ZWO Seastar S50, also available for a similar price. If you're interested in learning more about these smart telescopes, you can find links to my reviews in the video description below. Check out my absolute best picture of the Andromeda Galaxy captured with my specialized and rather costly astrophotography gear. It took me a solid 10 hours with each picture having a 3 minute exposure to get this stunning result. If you're curious about the art of astrophotography, consider subscribing to my channel or visiting my website at astroformspace.com. This month there's another incredible celestial sight you can enjoy without any fancy equipment. It's the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. These dazzling stars are visible to the naked eye and are located 444 light years away from Earth. What makes the Pleiades so fascinating, apart from their beauty, is their age. These stars are relatively young, just around 100 million years old. To put that into perspective, our Sun is a whopping 4.6 billion years old, making the Pleiades a mere fraction of its age. Studying this star cluster gives astronomers valuable insights into the early stages of star formation and evolution. Here's a fun fact. Although most people can spot about 6 to 7 stars in the Pleiades cluster with the naked eye, there are actually hundreds of stars in there. It's a great test for your eyesight. See how many you can count and let me know in the comments below. As the night falls, you can catch the Pleiades rising in the eastern sky around 7 pm, standing about 30 degrees above the horizon. As the night progresses, they'll climb higher, reaching about 65 degrees above the horizon at midnight. By 5 am, they'll start descending towards the west, still visible at an altitude of about 28 degrees. So, don't miss the chance to gaze up and marvel at the beauty of the Pleiades this month. 
if you've got a dedicated astrophotography setup, you know that there's a vast array of stunning deep sky objects out there. These beauties aren't visible to the naked eye. You'll need a good quality camera mounted on a star tracker or a telescope to catch a glimpse. Let me share my top 5 picks for November 2023. In particular, there are some beautiful nebulae visible with a telescope in the vicinity of Cassiopeia. Nebulae are huge molecular clouds in space where stars are born. Most nebulae are many light years in size, which is why we can observe and capture them with our backyard telescopes. Cassiopeia will be high in the northeastern sky after sunset, moving towards the north northwest until sunrise. My first tip is the Pac Man Nebula, named after the iconic video game character. You can find the Pac Man Nebula in the northeastern sky after sunset in the constellation Cassiopeia, just below the star Scatter. The Pac-Man Nebula, also known as NGC 281, is a region of active star formation. Within the nebula, young, hot stars are illuminating and ionizing the surrounding hydrogen gas, causing it to emit light in various colors. In between the constellations Cassiopeia and Camelopardalis, you'll find the Heart and Soul Nebulae, also known as IC 1805 and IC 1848. Both nebulae exhibit intricate and visually stunning structures with delicate filaments, dark dust lanes and vibrant regions of ionized hydrogen gas. Their aesthetic feel makes them popular targets for astrophotographers. Like the Pac-Man Nebula, these two stunning nebulae will be visible in the northwest after sunset in November. I do recommend using narrowband or dual band filters in combination with your camera to bring out the beautiful colors of these nebulae. Another stunning nebula to photograph in November is the California Nebula, named after the similarly shaped state of California in the United States. The California Nebula, also designated as NGC 1499, is illuminated by the bright star C per se, also known as Mankip. The ultraviolet radiation from this star ionizes the surrounding hydrogen gas, causing it to emit the characteristic red light observed in many emission nebulae. Located about 1000 light years from Earth, this nebula is quite big as seen from Earth, about 2.5 degrees in size. That's about 5 times the size of the Moon. The California Nebula is located in the constellation Perseus, below the constellation Cassiopeia. One final nebula that is awesome to photograph in November is the Wizard Nebula or NGC 7380. You can find the Wizard Nebula in the constellation Cepheus, which is to the left of Cassiopeia after sunset. It is named the Wizard Nebula due to its resemblance to a wizard with a long flowing cloak and because of that some have renamed it the Harry Potter Nebula. The Wizard Nebula displays beautiful structures including pillars, ridges and dark lanes of dust. These features are sculpted by the intense radiation of stellar winds from the young stars within the nebula. I really hope you get some clear skies in November to enjoy some of these amazing celestial sights. Take care, stay healthy and I'll catch you in the next video. Happy stargazing!